Hi there and welcome. In my previous video, I told you that I would come back with a video once the PCB layout for the GPIB bus controllers were done. And I'm done with it now. And this is the first board, the low cost version. If we take a look at it, it's basically the width of, uh, let's switch off these layers. Okay, so this is the top uh, overlay. And uh, as you can see, GPIB bus connector is on the right side here and the PCB is the same size as the connector. So it's pretty small and uh, if we do a rough measurement it's 2.2 uh, inch uh, in width and it'll be sticking out from the back of your uh, measurement equipment by about one and a half inch. So it's a pretty small layout. Now the component uh, placement, I have the connector here on the right as I said. Then we have the microcontroller just next to it. Below here we have the LEDs and the drivers. And uh, on top we have the USB connector. So there isn't really much to it. And uh, oh, finally this connector here is for the programming of the, of the microchip controller. And in this design this controller is getting the clock from the USB bus. So there's no crystal or anything to, to take care of here. If we look at the top layer, on the top layer here I have done the ground traces with a 40 or 50 mil trace width. I can't really remember, but it's a lot thicker than normal. These traces here for the data for the data and the control lines, they are 15 mil. And uh, also the via holes, I've made them a very, very big 38 mil drill hole. So these dimensions are so relaxed that practically any PCB manufacturer uh, can do them. Also, if we just take a quick look here, this is the connector for the USB uh, plug. And uh, I've done some stitching here and there are wires going through to the ground layer, which is uh, on the bottom layer. And uh, this is a standard way of laying out stuff. You should have uh, one layer with ground. And uh, my layer with ground looks like this. And as you can see, it's pretty good. There are one or two places where I could have improved it a little bit. In particular here, if I'd managed to uh, move this wire down a little bit, I could have filled some ground in through here. But yeah, uh, I think I can live with this. Uh, another thing that you just take a look at here is, whoops, if we can center it, is the pad here for the connector. This pad has a thermal relief to the ground plane, which means that you can still solder the pin to the pad here, but you don't have to heat up the entire copper plane out around here because they're connected through these little traces here. So this gives a fairly good electrical connection to the ground, but also it's possible to solder it. Of course, when I started the design, I, I didn't want to do more than this. Uh, just one simple little design that could be plugged into the back of my measurement equipment. But when I started looking at it, uh, I found, as you saw in my earlier video, that with just two extra chips, I could get a 100% GPIB bus compatible design and uh, one design that could handle a lot of instruments in, a, in parallel. So um, I have that somewhere here and that is the other design. And uh, as you can see, the layout is pretty similar except now I have a, a USB chip up here, I have a crystal here for my microcontroller and uh, I have the two drivers here. And apart from that, the design and the layout is pretty much identical. And again, if I just uh, switch off this, we have that the power lines are in uh, very thick tracks. And uh, the data lines and the control lines and what have you are 15 mil lines. So again, any PCB manufacturer can manufacture this board. One thing I might like to uh, draw your attention to is uh, the crystal here. We have the two pins for the crystal connected to the chip and the decoupling capacitors here. And you will find that in most microcontrollers and uh, other uh, chips with a clock, sorry, they normally have a ground pad just next to the clock pins. And that is normally used for making a noise guard around the clock uh, oscillator uh, like I've done here. And uh, the idea is that any noisy signals from the clock oscillator will be caught by this uh, track here. And then because there's only ground at one end, the current cannot flow anywhere else but down this track and to ground here and then there's a via punched through to the ground plane below. So um, I didn't do it 
because I thought this is just for hobby use and we don't need CE marking or FCC uh, marking or anything like that. Uh, but if you want to do it correctly, you should make this track all the way around and all the way around here, also to block any uh, noise coming out through here. Uh, but yeah, uh, I didn't do it this time because I thought, yeah, this is uh, it's good enough. If we take a look at uh, the bottom layer uh, here, you can see I have a pretty good ground fill. Basically everything is covered with ground. And the only thing I could have done better, I think, is uh, again near the crystal here. I don't have a noise guard. And basically the pads here uh, from the clock crystal, the noise from them will just uh, radiate directly into the ground uh, but uh, yeah in this case I don't really uh, I don't really care also because there is so much ground a little bit of local noise here is not going to be a problem as you can see I've been using uh, surface mount components but the smallest size is uh, like this one here is a 0805 uh, capacitor and uh, they are easily uh, solderable by hand so there should be no problem whatsoever Another thing I just want to say is that I'm not going to uh, send this board for PCB manufacture straight away because I have actually a lot of other uh, PCBs that I need to uh, send out and I want to do that in one batch and not uh, individual PCBs. So uh, the next episode of this video will be somewhere in uh, June 2016 is my best guess. But you can always subscribe to my channel and uh, you will get a notice whenever there's a new update on this. So yeah, that's it really. Um, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon.